What's up JFam, how's it going? Um, so I just quickly wanted to make a another follow-up video to my little tournament advice series and I wanted to talk about the counter pick rules and stage ban rules. So for those of you who have never been to a tournament before, um, I'll explain the rules so you know, you know, even if it's your first time going, you'll know more or less how things are meant to be played. So the first thing that happens is you go to a tournament, um, you go to the TO desk or wherever it is you have to sign up, and you, you give your entry fee and your venue fee. You tell them your name, and if you come with a carpool or a group of friends, you'll want to also point out um, who you came with so they don't put you against each other round one or round two, you know? Um, so anyway, after, you know, once bracket is going to begin, they'll call out your name and another player and you go and sit down and you play with that person. So take the time to set up your controls, if you have any controls, your name tag, things like that. And um, yeah, so once you set up your controls, you go into the character select screen and you both choose your character. If um, well, there's something called a double blind pick, and this is generally for more advanced players or if you know who you're fighting against. Um, but you can offer, you can ask for a double blind pick, and this means that um, basically this is to prevent counter picking. So some players will will wait on the character select screen, and they'll wait for you to choose your character, and then they'll choose their character. But this should be done at the same time generally. Or um, you can ask for a double blind pick, and a double blind pick is um, you would tell, some, whisper somebody what character you're going to choose into their ear, someone neutral, and then um, the other person has to choose their character, and then you have to choose the character that you said you were going to choose, and that's how double blind picking works. Um, and you can ask for this whenever you want, um, as long as it's game one. Uh, game one of the set. So, you guys pick your characters, right? And now you have to agree on a stage. So generally what I do, since most matches go to Smashville anyway, I ask my opponent, do you just want to start on Smashville or do you want a stage strike? And nine times out of ten people say, yeah, let's just go to Smashville. Because it saves time, it's just easier that way. Smashville is pretty neutral. But occasionally, people want to stage strike, and stage striking is completely normal. That is the rules. So, usually, you would play you would play rock paper scissors um, with the, with your opponent, and then winner gets to strike first or second. You get to choose if you win. Um, I usually don't care. I'm just like, you want to strike first or second? We don't have to play rock paper scissors. It's a it's a waste of time to me. Um, I don't think it changes that much, but whatever. Um, so I usually ask, do you want to strike first or second? So anyway, the person who is striking first will strike one stage that they do not want to go to. And this is out of the five neutral stages. The five neutral stages are Final Destination, Smashville, Town and City, uh, Battlefield, and Lilat. Um, sometimes instead of Lilat, you'll have Dreamland. Which is kind of weird because now you have two battlefields, but you know, um, every tournament rules are different. Oh, and you're playing two stock six minutes generally, no items. Um, so, alright, so whoever wins or whoever wants to strike first, you strike one stage. So you eliminate one stage that you don't want to play on. So if I'm Diddy Kong, I usually strike battlefield first because I don't like battlefield. Now it's just those four stages left. My opponent will then get rid of two of those stages. Cool. So now let's say I have they they sh they stage striked um, Final Destination and Lilat. So now I ha I have to choose between Town and City or Smashville. And then you choose the stage. Good luck, and you guys play. Now, after game one, there is a winner and there is a loser, of course. So the winner will now ban a stage, meaning. This is a stage that your opponent cannot take you to. You only get one ban. Um, so, and now um, counter pick stages become added to the equation. So that includes the stage Duck Hunt and uh, Dreamland or Lilat if it's not a starter where you are. So you would ban one stage, and then your. Um, so then the player who lost will 
give the stage that they want to go to. So let's say I ban Duck Hunt, then my opponent will take me to Battlefield. So, and then your opponent, whoever lost, after they choose the stage, they should ask you, are you going to stay the same character or are you going to switch? Because winner has to switch character first. It's just in the counterpicking rules. You don't want to change your character first if you lose because now you're giving your opponent the advantage. They're going to then, they could then choose their, change their character. So if you lose, you pick a stage, your opponent changes character if they want to, and then you change your character if you want to. And then you go into game two, and then if it gets to game three, then you do it again. Winner bans a stage, loser chooses stage. Winner changes character if they want, loser changes character if they want. And you could, some, some tournaments have something called Dave's Stupid Rule. And this rule means that you cannot go back to a stage that you already won on. So this is called DSR. Um, so for example, if you beat me on Smashville, um, if you beat me on Smashville, I could take you back to Smashville. But if I, if, um, yeah, but then if you lose, you can't take me back to Smashville because you already won there. So what ends up happening is somebody wins on a stage and then the, the, uh, their opponent will counterpick and they'll win on another stage plus the two stage bans. So potentially you can eliminate four stages out of all of them, uh, which can create for an interesting dynamic in stage picking and stuff like that. But yeah, you want to take everything into account the height of the ceilings, the uh, you know the platform layouts, and you know um, what characters your opponent you, your opponent uses, etc., etc. But yeah, that that's basically the process. And then after game three, you know, you say good game, you unplug your controllers, and you go report to the the TO. So that's basically it, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let me know if you need me to clarify anything. I know. Um, it's a little complicated if, you, if you've never done it, but I promise it's easy. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up please, and share it with anybody who is interested in going to tournaments. Um, share it with some friends that you, know, you might want to go with, stuff like that. And yeah, thank you all. I will see you guys next time. Later.